Well, we're over at the uh, Norfolk Cottage Garden this afternoon and we're doing some jobs for August to try and keep the colour continuous in this garden. And that entails doing quite a bit of cutting back and deadheading. And one of the jobs that has come to our attention is this perennial pea, which is growing on the front of the cottage. You'll see it's almost finished most of its first flush of flowering. And what Kate's doing is removing all the dead head which are forming these peas. If you let those stay on the plant, it will produce seeds into them. But we don't find that this actually germinates from seeds particularly well. And this is a perennial pea, so it is going to shoot from the base every year. So to keep this flowering throughout August, what you need to do is go over it on a regular basis and remove all those seed pods and that will encourage it to produce new growth and with the new growth should come plenty of new for young flower bud. The geraniums in these pots again will really benefit from being regularly deadheaded. Just remove all the spent flower spikes. Sometimes these fade in a series where you get still some colour and the centre of the flowers on the geraniums have gone. If you're going to be away for a few days it's probably best to take the whole thing off or if you've got some very fine pointed snips you can debolt the flower heads partially leaving the outer flowers still in place. But this plant we're going to deadhead, feed and hopefully that will encourage it to put more flower spikes up again over the next couple of weeks. Just going to tidy that up and remove any dead leaves and dead just so it looks nice and tidy and then we'll feed it up. It you can see day. the flower heads on this one with the seeds starting to form and that's going to be taking the energy out of the plant again so we're going to remove all these, cut back any dead wood that's uh, formed and feed and water these plants to bring them back into further flower formation. Roses are another plant that really benefits from deadheading and unless you've got a variety that forms decorative hips then you really want to be going over these on a regular basis and removing any spent flowers before the hips start to form. That again encourages all the new nutrients and growth into fresh bud and will keep the roses flowering. If they don't continuously form bud throughout the summer even rose varieties that have a single flush of flower in May can be encouraged to form secondary flowering spurts throughout the season. That may not be until the end of August or into September, but it's still worth doing. And again, feeding these to bring them into new growth and to encourage fresh bud formation. It's well worth doing at this time of year. It's also a great time to start tidying up herbaceous borders. And this is a prime example for a good haircut. You'll see this plant has collapsed and that's been helped by the fact the gardener's been in to cut the hawthorn hedge behind it. But in the centre, we've got this lovely fresh growth coming up. So what Kate's going to do is tidy this up and take all the growth off that's collapsed. And what you'll find is that that secondary growth will now push on up and you'll get a second flush of flower. If there are any flowers coming off this, they make ideal cut flowers for the house. So don't feel that these are being wasted, just look upon it as a crop. This plant is really popular with the bees and other insects that just seem to love the pollen and the open nature of these bald blue flowers. So we're going to leave a few of these down and just let them finish those off because there's still some quite young flowers coming on on this despite it having collapsed onto the floor. This Lysomachia yeah. has now finished flowering and what we're going to do is cut this back because just to the side of it we've got a fantastic Michaelmas daisy which is just starting to bud up and by removing the Lysomachia we'll give some extra light onto that and the form it will form a beautiful ball and that's a lovely blue purpley colour that will be flowering in September and October. So we're just cutting out all this. There's some geranium again there which will be cut right back to the, the crown and that will come back and flush again. We will get secondary flower from the That's it, all being cut back, and we'll tidy that all up so the Michaelmas Daisy gets a full amount of light.
by tidying up the lysomachia we've uncovered the dried up spring bulbs these are daffodil leaves we leave them completely till they're dry and they'll pull away without damaging any of the crown of the bulbs below now if you take them off too early then you're going to weaken the bulbs by leaving them in the borders with the secondary growth around them which covers them up so you don't actually have to watch them dry like this but they're now ready to be removed completely and we'll tidy this border up completely so we've just got this Michaelmas daisy as a nice ball of colour in a couple of months time. Another job for August is doing the hedges on the periphery of the cottage garden and by this time of year they are looking like this really before they're cut. You've got about three or four foot of growth on them and it's timing really that's important when you're doing these hedges. If you tidy them too early then you're going to have to redo them at least another once, possibly twice, to keep them looking good. But by timing it to middle of August you can usually get away with a single cut. And that has to be done in stages around here because of the length of the hedges. So these ones were done over the course of the last two weeks. The one which was done first is already starting to shoot again. But what you will find it's a far easier job just going over that with some electric trimmers just to keep it in nice tight condition. It's not the big job that it is to do the first cut each season. But again the later you can leave this the less likely you are to get that secondary growth that's going to need another big cut later in the season. Now we've finished tidying up the Lysomachia which was overgrowing the Michaelmas daisy and that's left a nice cluster ball on the front here. You can see that it's not filled in properly on the back where the other plants were dominating it but it gives us a chance just to pick over this border now, get any of the cooch and grass and any other perennial weeds that we've got growing in here out, give it a top dress and a feed and that should then grow away nicely and give us some autumn colour. We were going to cut this one back down to the ground but we've decided to leave it in because we think it's going to give us some structure in front of the shrubs behind and it also may give us some autumn colour. We're not certain what this is, we're going to look it up but it's finished flowering, probably would benefit from deadheading. We'll do a bit of research and decide whether we're going to leave that or cut it back down but I don't think this is one that will give us a second flush of growth. This one has tiny blue flowers. It does self seed we think but if anybody recognises this plant can let us know what it is, it would be really appreciated. Right, just behind that we've discovered another job. We've got a daylily here which has been completely grown through by some cooch grass and the Lysomachia is coming forward and it also needs dead heading. So we're going to tidy this one up now, cut back the Lysomachia, try and get some of the cooch out. May have to actually lift this completely obviously then is an opportunity to divide the daylily and spread it around the garden or to put it back into three or four clumps in the same position. So we'll see how we get on with that over the next uh, 10 minutes. plant just to the side of it is purple loosestrife. This really isn't in an ideal spot. It's in heavy shade here and in a very dry area of our garden. Despite this being on the Norfolk Broads, this garden is on the dry side. It's elevated above and drained very well by the drainage dikes that surround it. It's struggling here but still flowering away. You see there's a lot of dieback in the centre of this. It's not like the dry conditions we've had this summer. So again this is a good one to consider moving. Um, it forms a perennial clump of roots that can be divided quite nicely and that's the best way of dividing and propagating this plant. So we may think about giving this one a new home over the next couple of hours. The other thing we could do is to reduce the canopy over it. It's got this rather beautiful deep red lilac that is actually very very attractive but it's getting rather large and that's part of the problem why this border is so dry and so shady. So that's the other option to give the lilac and the forsythia that's growing from behind it right over and through a good haircut and cut those back and start shaping them. Again that would let more light and water through and give you the option to leave the Lysomachia in its original planting position. But for now probably what we're going to do is just deadhead it and then give it a good water and a feed and probably think about moving this one 
if we haven't managed to get it looking more healthy next spring would be the ideal time to move it before it's gone into main growth. Just a little further round on this border we've got another clump of daylily which again by the first week in August is starting to look a little sad. It's done most of its flowering. There's a lot of dead heads on this. Still a few buds coming on but to encourage a little further flowering on this what we're going to do is try and remove as much of this die back and the flower shoots that have got seed heads on them and just again encourage this back into growth by watering and feeding these clumps. At the back here we've got red hot pokers, a variety that's not red but orange fading down to the yellow which is doing very well. That's far happier with the droughted conditions that we've had this year and that's flowering really nicely now on a clump that's a little shaded now being overgrown by the Ceanothus that we've planted that wants to come forward and we're trying to pull that back towards the shed wall uh, and we'll do that, we'll tie it back in now. At the back we've got the rose which is coming up and over. Again we're going to try and get in and deadhead that to encourage this to continue flowering right the way throughout the summer months. We should have this flowering in September and October this year. This rose is absolutely spectacular. We think it's a hybrid tea, possibly Whiskey Mac. We're not absolutely certain. Really healthy, lush green, emerald green foliage. Every year this does superbly in this really dry, elevated corner of the garden on the shed wall. But a beautiful repeat flower and a strong, vigorous grower. Just look at the bud growth where we have previously deadhead this. It just breaks away with these beautiful, deep red spikes of new growth which are very easily encouraged back into flower buds. You can see that one coming on here. So this will continue to flower and the scent of it even with the light flowering that we've got at the moment is absolutely beautiful. We've had this rose flowering here in Norfolk in December and still looking absolutely lovely. Another job in this area of the garden, which is just on the side of a little inlet from one of the drainage dikes, is to cut back the, the reeds that are growing through and swamping this lovely clump of daylily. It's a beautiful reddy orange pink one this. And again, it's been flowering really nicely. So what we're going to do is just clear some of this reed growth away, remove the dead heads again, and hopefully encourage this. This one is actually growing in some nice moist conditions, so it doesn't need watering, but will flower away nicely now for the rest of summer. These reeds are a particular feature here in Norfolk. They just come along the side of every dike and start invading into the garden. You've got to be very careful when you're actually gardening with these. If you try to pull them with bare hands they'll just cut right through your flesh. They are really razor sharp and tough as old boots. So you need a good pair of gardening gloves and a good pair of snips to actually deal with these. And probably what we'll have to do and do every year in about a month's time is completely debulk this little cut and cut them all back using power tool strimmers usually to get in there with waders on and just remove all this growth before it starts drying and collapsing onto the floor. Day lilies are great value plants. They're not particularly as popular as they used to be, but there's a whole range of different color varieties around. And if you're prepared just to deadhead them on a regular basis, you can keep them in flower throughout the summer months. So they really are a great value plant, very easy to propagate by division and very easy to grow. You'll see the ones that we showed you earlier in the very dry borders. Just by feeding and watering those, we'll get them back into a lush, beautiful flower like you see in front of you. Generally, with a bit of care and attention, in the midsummer months, there's a good chance you can keep a lot of the colour extending through into August and September here in Norfolk. We we're very pleased with the way the garden's looking overall this year. It's been quite dry, it's been a lot of wind. When we have had rain, it's been absolutely torrential. But overall, the cottage is looking superb. Still with enough colour to keep your interest. 
So all in all, a good job done.